Hey guys, it's Ross Scott and on the Space Couch today. It's Utini time, so we're joined by our two Jawas. The Offworld Jawa from The Mandalorian and the standard Tatooine Jawa from everything else in Star Wars. Obviously, we've gone through the differences between them. The plastic uh, moulded robe, this one being soft goods, the different colour of the eyes, all that sort of thing. So, this has got a spread on them. And there it is. We will have a look at the Sand People next. So, there you see them there. And there you see uh, that is from uh, Attack of the Clones, um, where you see the open sand crawler in um, when Anakin's trying to find his mother. So, bright eyed scavengers. Species Jawa, homeworld Tatooine, affiliation neutral, known for scavenging. The Jawas of Tatooine hold many secrets. Though they are a common sight across the planet, few outside of their society even know what they look like beneath their tattered brown robes. From under their hoods peer glowing eyes and high-pitched voices speak their native language of Jawa Eves. They live in towering sand crawlers, tread-laden vehicles that serve as their home and roving warehouse. From this mobile workshop they repair machines and droids that they sell to local farmers, travelling between homesteads lining up their wares for sale. Other species can sometimes learn their language, though since speaking it involves using scent, it is notoriously difficult to master. The creatures default to the easier Jawa trade talk when striking deals. The Jawa seem single-mindedly focused on technology. When there is a lost droid or crashed starship, they are rarely far behind. They seize upon almost any opportunity to quickly gather unattended tech, dismantling anything of value and preparing it for resale. Using ion weapons cobbled together from scrap, they seek to steal, but never to destroy, their find. Droids unlucky enough to be caught alone become the property of the clan. This behaviour proves fateful for the rebel droids R2-D2 and C-3PO, whose capture by the Jaws and subsequent sale to Omen Lars on Tatooine sparks Luke Skywalker's journey to becoming a Jedi. Though their exact movements are hard to track, it's believed that ships travelling to and from Tatooine enable some Jawas to leave their homeworld. Colonies exist on Arvala 7, Navarro and Vancor, where they live much as they do on Tatooine, inextricably drawn to all forms of technology, often at the annoyance of their neighbours. So I'm a little surprised we didn't see them in The Force Awakens, unless they were like deep background, but I guess that things like the Tidos with a replacement, and then would have been having a high old time on Exegol after the battle there. So the quote um, for the um, Jawas is from Kuil in The Mandalorian. It's, the Jawas steal, they don't destroy. And just about the sand crawler says, these vehicles may be unarmed, but their robust armour plating protects Jawas from most threats. And there it is there. So, yes. Good to see Jawas back in The Mandalorian, of course, because they're a great background character. And uh, there's something I picked up on a more recent viewing of Star Wars. I never noticed the fur on their hands before. Been watching that film for 40 plus years, never noticed that previously. But yes, anyway, guys, that's just what I've got to say about our favourite furry little creatures. And they get a few stories in the, um, from a certain point of view, for the 40th anniversary of A New Hope as well. And they were all really, really cool. But for now, that's all about Jawas. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion, drop a comment, topic you'd like to see discussed, or like the video.